Hey Mermeko team, today we're diving into a super important topic in ant keeping, something that comes back every year and that you really can't skip if you want your colonies to live long and stay healthy. I'm talking about diapause. So what exactly is this winter pause and why is it so essential even for beginners? Diapause is a natural mechanism in many ant species, kind of like hibernation in other animals. It's how they survive during cold or dry periods by slowing down their metabolism completely. The whole colony enters a resting phase no egg laying, no brood care, barely any movement, and they live off the reserves they've built up during the active season. Some species have this cycle built into them, we call it obligatory diapause. That's the case for Formica, Lasius, or Camponotus, for example. These are what we call endogenous heterodynamic species. Their internal clock tells them it's time to pause, even if it's still warm where you live. Other species have facultative diapause like Mesa or Chromatogaster. They react more to their environment, and if the temperature drops, they'll slow down. But if you keep them warm, they can stay active. But careful, skipping their diapause every year can seriously shorten the colony's lifespan. It's like never letting your body rest. It burns them out. And then there are species like Fidol pallidula, which are exogenous homodynamic. They don't naturally enter diapause and come from warmer regions, so they're very sensitive to cold. You've got to respect each species needs not some biasy. That's part of what makes this hobby so fascinating. Several studies have shown that if you skip diapause in species that need it, their brood stops developing, the queen stops laying eggs, and mortality increases fast. So yeah, it may seem like nothing's happening, but it's actually a vital step for the colony's health and long-term success. Diapause is also super important for the queen herself. It gives her ovaries a break and helps her live longer. Some queens can last over 10 years if cared for properly, and this rest period is part of why. Before diapause starts, you want to feed the colony well, sugar for energy, and especially proteins to help develop the last batches of brood. Once diapause begins, you don't feed them anymore unless you've got a very fragile semi-claustral species where a small bit of sugar cotton might help, but in general, no food during diapause. There are two main ways to do diapause. The first is a cold room, like a garage, a cellar, or an unheated attic. Just be careful of freezing temps, especially for small colonies. The second method is a fridge or a wine cooler. It's more controlled and safer, but space is limited and you'll need to manage humidity to avoid mold. In both cases, avoid thermal shock. You want a slow transition, gradually lowering the temperature over a few days and doing the same when bringing them back out. Diapause usually lasts about two to three months depending on the species and some can go up to four months. A little bit of mortality is totally normal, especially among older workers. Once it's over, the queen slowly starts laying again, the brood returns and the cycle begins anew. And if you're keeping species from the southern hemisphere, like some Myrmichia or Australian ants, you've got to follow their natural cycle which means a diapause from June to August. Never reverse the seasons, Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere. It doesn't work and it can really mess up your colony. So diapause isn't just a pause, in, it's a vital step in your ant's life cycle. It gives the queen time to rest, the colony time to regenerate, and it sets the stage for healthy growth in the seasons to come. It may feel a bit quiet during those months, but trust me, it makes all the difference in the long run. If you like this guide, drop your best like and join the team by subscribing to Alex Formi. See you soon for more myrmecological adventures.